In this example, we're going to do the dynamics of a two-link pendulum. So here, we're assuming that the links are L1 and L2 and weigh M1 and M2, and their moment of inertias are given. So in case these links are not uniform, we're given the inertias and we're given the distance to the center of mass. We need to find the joint torques, tau1 and tau2, on each joint. So those, we need those equations of motion because the joint torque will determine the position, velocity, and acceleration of the linkages. For this one, we will use the second method that we have discussed with the Jacobian energy and the Coriolis because there are two links on here, so there will be a Coriolis turn. So first we need to find forward kinematics and Jacobian. Next we find the kinetic energy and get the mass matrix. Then we find the Coriolis terms. Next, we find the gravitational terms using potential energy. So because there are two joints on this robot, then the formula that we need to boil all of this down to is going to kind of look like this. So to start out, let's get forward kinematics and the velocity linear Jacobian. Now for link one, it's easy to get that kinetic energy, so we don't need to get the Jacobian ahead of time. But for link two, we do need it because that is going to be a more complicated velocity since it is connected to the second link. So forward kinematics for the second link would be the coordinates to this, its center of mass. Because Z points out of the page, um, all of the Z axes are just zero, zero, one. And then we need to get the origins. And here, P2 is going to be the ON that's in that equation because it is a point that we're calculating. So now we can use the cross product for a revolute joint to get the Jacobian. Next, we need to find the kinetic energy. This is pretty straightforward for link one. That is the general formula. Um, so more specifically, this would be the linear term and the angular term using parallel axis theorem. So if we put this into matrix form, we need to put it into matrix form so we can get the mass matrix. That's like from step two up here. So next for the second link, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. We'll have to use that whole formula with the Jacobian.
So this is the whole formula for kinetic energy for link two. So then if we do all that multiplication out, you'll need to use one of the trigonometric identities to get this part. So to get this from your multiplication, you'll have to use, so take note of that for when, if you multiply out these matrices. So now that we've got kinetic energy for link one and for link two, we can find the whole mass matrix. So M11 is gonna be everything that is multiplied by the theta one dot. Now M21 and M12 happen to be the same. They won't always be the same, but for this example, they are. So now we have the whole M matrix. The next step is to get the Coriolis matrix. So we need to get the Coriolis matrix in the form of C times Q dot. So this is going to look something like this. And then we use the formula Okay, now CIJK equals CJIK. So that is gonna make this a little bit easier to calculate. Um, but each of these IJ and K mean different things. So just as a quick, quick review on how to find the Coriolis terms CIJK, we use this formula and note that I is the joint to multiply by inside the C matrix. So I would be one here be for the times Q1 dots and I is two here for the times Q2 dots. And J is the column for the C matrix and the joint to multiply by outside the C matrix. So in here, J is two. These all have the same J because they're all the second column. Finally, K is the row for the C matrix. So these all have the same K which is one because this is the top row. So we need to find all of the Coriolis terms. Now, some of these will turn out to be zero, which is convenient, but we have to actually calculate them all. So let's get started on that. So C111, I, J, and K are all one. So that makes the formula pretty simple. have theta one show up anywhere in it. So this is just going to be zero. Now notice here that M12 and M21 are the same from that. So anyway, these two terms cancel each other. And we just need del M11, del theta two.
Okay, so you can see a lot of these C's turn out to be zero. So if we want to put them back into this matrix, we'll see a lot of stuff ends up being zero. So our final C matrix. And our Q dot, which is theta one dot, theta two dot, it's going to look like this. So this gets the C Q dot term of the equations of motion. So now finally, we need to get the potential energy. So now to get the potential energy, then we're going to use the MGH formula. And now we just need to take the derivatives of this to get the G terms. So finally, we need to find the equations of motion. So this is how the equations of motion will look. You can just put in all the formulas that we worked out using the m's, g's, l's, r's, sines and cosines, and plug those in. It's just too much to write out, so we abbreviate it like this. But know that those are the correct answers. Here is a Simulink model of the system. You can see we're going to get theta 1, theta 2, then so all of the red stuff here is theta 2, all of the blue stuff is theta 1, and the purple stuff is things that are shared by both of them. So if we run this, let's watch the behavior. You can see that it swung back and forth a lot. And since there was no friction in the system, it just kept swinging. So looking at plots of position, velocity, and acceleration, we can see that it appears to be an undamped system, which is correct because we didn't have any friction in it. And then you can see that theta 2 flops around a lot more than theta 1. So this is reasonable.